every time I mention Dabs Hope as one of my favorite places for collecting manufactured engineering materials, there's always somebody who mentioned Hot Jupiter and says it's much better and I should go there instead. So today we're going to answer that question once and for all. Which place is best, Dabs Hope or Hot Jupiter? Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Downworth Astronomy. So today we're going to compare Hot Jupiter and Dav's Hope. I assume most of you are familiar with Dav's Hope, but if you're not familiar with Hot Jupiter, I just want to give you a rundown of it. Hot Jupiter is this weird gas giant orbiting really, really close to a brown dwarf, as we can see here, in a system where the main star is actually a normal main sequence star. So it's a really weird system. In case you're wondering where it is, it is in Col 285 sector RF-CB14-7. It'll be in the description, of course. It's actually not too far from Dav's Hope. We can see Dav's Hope's over here, and we have Call Sector here. Now, in this system, you will find this tourist beacon called Hot Jupiter. Now, why is this system special? It is because if we jump into the map again, notice that this system is unpopulated. Because the system is unpopulated, that means it counts as an anarchy system. And because it's anarchy, that means we're allowed to kill everything. We can kill clean ship, we can kill everything that moves. And we're not going to get a bounty, we're not going to get notoriety, it's not going to be any police coming after us. We're just good to go, just slaughter everything that moves. So what you need to do is you need to bring yourself a combat ship with some collector limpets. Uh, I think four is pretty good, three or four is probably a good balance. And then a lot of cargo, because you're going to need to carry a lot of limpets. So you probably would have to build a purpose-built ship for this, or at least make some alterations to your normal um, PVE ship. So once we drop into the site, you will notice there are ships flying around in here. Amongst them, of course, we're unlucky with this spawn. Normally there will be beluga liners flying around in here. This, this time we only got orcas, so orca it is. Open up on the poor, poor passenger liner. They're gonna try and run away. Sometimes they might shoot out mines, but with a decent shield, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. I've never actually seen these guys fire back with anything else than mines, and as you can see, they go down very, very quickly. Once they die, you will see that they actually spawn quite a decent amount of engineering materials. And of course, if you get the belugas, they spawn even more. So all you do now is just position yourself nice and close to all those lovely, lovely materials, fire out your collectors, and scoop them up. Other than that, you will of course also get ship scans when you're scanning the ships. It's not a lot, but you do get a little bit, so you can get a little bit of data here as well. And you might also see in a second that for instance there are like holders flying around and there's also already one of the ships that's probably jumped out already. We just can't see it on the scanner yet because it's too far away. They do spawn high wakes in here as well where they jump out. So you can, if you have a wake scanner, scan those for even more data. However, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that because the wakes are spread out. They're sometimes spread out with like 20, 30 kilometers between them. So I probably would go someplace else if you want to scan wakes for data. But for manufactured materials, this is not too bad. If you're lucky, there might still be some passenger ships floating around in here. You can go, you can kill the next one. If not, then you have two options. You actually have three options now. You can go to Super Cruise and drop back in. That will respawn the, uh, the ships. You can log out to main menu and then you can log back in. That would also respawn the ships or you can sit around and wait. Now, if you use any of the super cruise or locking out options, you will lose your limpets. And that means you will need to carry a lot of limpets for this to work, because otherwise you have to go and restock all the time. I'm just gonna see here, oh, there we go, Beluga Liner. That's perfect timing, as we're sitting here waiting for the next ships to arrive. And that's a Beluga down, let's see what he dropped. Look at all that lovely material. We've even got some conductive polymers here, all kinds of good stuff. While my limpets get to work and collect materials, this would be a good time to talk about the selection of materials you have. So here we have all the manufactured materials that's available in the game in their different grades, and horizontally they are grouped together in their different groups. Now, if we take a look at Dav's Hope, for instance, these are the materials available in Dav's Hope. There's no great fair materials, but you have most grade one to four materials. There, you don't, there are some of the, uh, the alloys there that we're missing, and we're also missing 
missing a lot of the composites where we get lots of high density composites, but not a lot else in uh, in that category. However, if we take and make the same graph or same uh, visual and look at it for hot Jupiter, it looks like this. So first of all, you can see the selection of materials are much, much smaller. A lot of the materials that are missing here is the grade one materials, which is actually good because that means that we don't get those low end materials. We're going to get more of the higher end materials. So the average grade per material should be better for hot Jupiter compared to Daft's Hope. However, there is even the grade two, three and four categories. There are still materials missing pretty much all the capacitors. We don't get any of those at all. Same thing with the focus crystals and like flawed focus and refined crystals. We don't get those either. We don't get any of the alloys either. So there is a number of materials missing from the list that we do get at Daft Soap that we don't get at Hot Jupiter. Now, the number of materials you get per hour is better at Hot Jupiter compared to Daft's Hope. Does that make it better? Well, not necessarily. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're only looking for the materials within the limited list of stuff that's available at Hot Jupiter, then by all means go here. Take your combat ship out, go out, shoot some, uh, some passenger ships and collect materials. It is quicker. However, if you need any of the materials that is not available here, you're probably better off going to Daft's Hope where you can get everything at one place compared to going here where you need to go to two different places, most likely also in two different ships. Now, if you found this video useful, I would really like if you would go down and hit the like button as well as subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Until next time, I will see you guys in space.